digital and of course very modern apes can i tell you one of my biggest pet peeves you're probably looking at the title and thinking to yourself it's when young earth creationists or creationists of any stripe propose that apes other than humans don't have white sclera or can't have white sclera but that's actually not what my pet peeve is my pet peeve is when people don't try. So we've got young earth creationists today and they're doing everything they can to stay relevant and to be taken seriously by the general public because conventional science has pretty much already written them off. And yet they really are out here proposing over and over and over again as recently as 2021 that hominids that aren't human don't have white sclera and can't have white sclera. To be clear, the sclera are the whites of the eyes. It's actually the surface of the eye that doesn't include like the iris and the pupil. And humans, of course, have white sclera. You can see mine right now, the whites of my eyes as I look around and you follow my gaze. But young earth creationists from ICR, AIG, Genesis Apologetics, what have you, come out and in articles and in videos, they just boldly proclaim that other apes don't have the whites of the eyes. And in fact, they take it a step further and propose that any time a hominin is recreated with having white sclera, that this is done with intentional deception or manipulation in mind. I don't think they found any eyeball fossils, but if you wanted to make an ape man look more human, changing the colors of the eye whites in pictures is a good way to do it. And at this point, you're probably thinking, guts a given, you're always getting mad at creationists for being wrong on this, that, or the other thing. And like the reason why this one in particular really irritates me is because all it takes is a Google search to show that other apes do in fact have white sclera sometimes. It's a part of their natural variation. Okay, so let's see how easy this is just by hopping on Google Images and clicking Ape White Sclera. Wow, look how many there are. There's a gorilla with white sclera. Here's a bonobo with white sclera. We have a chimpanzee with white sclera. Again, we can continue to look. Let's, let's just, let's find an orangutan. How about orangutan white sclera? Let's see what we get. Wow, orangutan with white sclera. Another baby chimp with white sclera. Gorillas, right? Obviously, it's a part of their natural variation, so some don't. Here's a big male, flanged male with white sclera, etc., etc., etc. I could just do this for, for days and days and days. The point is, is that finding out that apes that are human, non-human hominids, have white sclera is as easy as typing it out on Google. One Google search. Go to images. That's how easy it is. And yet... But that's not what evolutionists want you to think. Shown with human expressions, eye whites, which no apes have, and walking upright, they want you to think she was on her way to becoming human. Why do you think the artist made these creatures appear more human-like by throwing in an affectionate smile and depicting them hanging out like a human family going to a picnic or something? Why did he draw them walking upright? Why make the shapes and colors of their eyes more human than ape? Oh, wow. Hey, look at the whites of those eyes. You know, I've been to a lot of different zoos and I've seen a lot of different apes and each of them have completely brown eyes and not the eye whites that us humans have. I will give the pain a 10. One Google search, that's all it takes. That's the minimum amount of effort for doing a video or an article on a subject, right? Sitting down and Googling the subject. And I'm here slamming them because obviously you should at least look up images to see if you're wrong about something before just boldly proclaiming it in like a million videos and a million other articles as well but there also exists a rich body of literature that catalogs this so not only did they not like bother to google image search it but they obviously clearly didn't take the next step on the journey if you're going to be covering some kind of subject on YouTube with any kind of authority or trying to change anyone's mind, which is do a literature search on like Google Scholar or something of the like. See what the scientific community is saying about this. And the reason this is all on my mind is because of a very recent paper that just came out titled White Sclera is Present in Chimpanzees and Other Mammals. And it's slated for the March 2023 release in the JHE, the Journal of Human Evolution. And like what this paper actually of uncovered what this has put out there into the world of the literature is that not only do white sclera exist in other apes 
but about one in six chimpanzees has white sclera as a part of the natural variation of a given population. It's that common. Now, before we get into this, let's pause for a moment and appreciate like what the idea is behind having the whites of the eyes visible. In humans and in hominid evolution, the whites of the eyes are thought to have evolved in order to facilitate greater cooperation. Obviously, it wasn't done with that in mind, but rather individuals who had white sclera were able to better convey their intentions to others, and others were able to more clearly read those intentions, making them a better group member, right? If I look over to my left, you know exactly where I'm trying to indicate for you to go or draw your attention to. This is called the cooperative eye hypothesis, and it's got like a decent amount of support to it, particularly given that white sclera already exist in other hominid populations, as we just saw with this recent paper that was like quantitatively putting out there the number or percentage of individuals that have white sclera in chimpanzees, but we do also see these white sclera exist naturally in orangutans and in gorillas and in bonobos. So the idea is that if you have white sclera as a natural part of the variation within the population, and then you add in a selective pressure for cooperation, you're going to see the favoring of the white sclera moving forward in that group. And this very recent paper does a great job of sort of outlining the basis for the cooperative eye hypothesis. In their introduction, they say humans can communicate with a subtle glance. This is due in part to our eyes having visible white sclera that contrasts with the iris, thereby enabling humans to effectively attend to others' gaze direction. Both our white sclera and complex social cognition have long been considered unique among mammals, strengthening the hypothesis that these traits are linked i.e. the cooperative eye hypothesis, gaze signaling, and gaze camouflage hypothesis. However, the last two decades has revealed that our closest ape relatives, especially chimpanzees, exhibit complex perspective-taking abilities and that they may have greater variability in eye color and other primates than previously thought. Some gorillas exhibit white sclera, and many Sumatran orangutans and bonobos exhibit light brown sclera. Recent studies have sparked debate over the extent to which the sclera need to be white to effectively contrast with the iris and enhance the visibility of gaze direction. A critical piece of information is missing from the debate. Studies continue to report chimpanzees, our closest living relatives, along with bonobos, as having dark sclera. Early reports of the occasional wild chimpanzee with white sclera have been considered pathologies or anomalies. More recent studies uh, have not addressed the few cases that diverge from the assumed norm of uniformly dark sclera. Is white sclera an anomaly among chimpanzees, or might prior studies have failed to detect variation due to small samples? Here we examine the prevalence and development of white sclera from photographs in the largest sample of wild chimpanzee study to date, 230 individuals. We then explore the presence of white sclera in 70 zoo mammal species. So like, we've known about the existence of white sclera in other hominids for a long time. The debate has been whether or not this is anomalous or not, whether or not this is maybe pathological, or to what extent is it a part of their natural variation. And what this study shows, as we'll see in a moment, is that it very much is. Although the fact that the white sclera exists in these populations of different hominids has never once been appreciated by any major creationist organization that I have seen. Continuing onward, and we're gonna keep with the open access version. As you can see at the top, I have, ins I have access, excuse me, through my institution, but you know, I don't wanna get in any legal trouble. And I know that some of these guys can be kind of litigious, so we're gonna play it safe. In the results section, they say, in a large population of wild chimpanzees at Ngogo at Kibeli National Park, Uganda, we found considerable variation in eye color. 15% of chimpanzees exhibited white sclera, 34 of 230 individuals. For five of these 34 individuals, white sclera was visible when they looked directly forward. For the other 29, white sclera was visible when not looking directly forward, exposing more sclera at the periphery of the eyes. White sclera is often considered a uniquely human trait in the scholarly literature and popular media. So that's interesting because as we just saw, it seems to be the, the idea, the position of young earth creationists that this is constantly like vibed against, that the popular media, the popular science communication <laughs> cabal is intentionally putting white sclera on non-human hominids and hominins in order to like trick the public and make them think we're more closely related than we actually are. Although, 98.8% of coding base fares is pretty dang close. I digress. They say our study confirms that this is not the case. Almost one in six chimpanzees at Ngogo had full or partial white sclera in at least one eye. 
which tend to be more visible when the gaze was averted rather than direct. Even a small amount of white or light sclera may make the gaze more apparent, and if is thus relevant, excuse me, for hypotheses about gaze signaling and social cognition. And to take a moment to look at other aspects of the literature that support that last sentence, that having white sclera enhances an individual's ability to perceive where a gaze is being aimed at, and thus their social cognition and cohesion, we're looking at this paper. Experimental evidence that uniformly white sclera enhances the visibility of eye gaze direction in humans and chimpanzees by Kano et al. from 2022. And what they did is they experimentally tested whether or not white sclera aided in gaze following. This study tested the ability of human and chimpanzee participants to discriminate the eyes gaze, eye gaze directions of human and chimpanzee images in computerized tasks. We varied the level of brightness and size in the stimulus images to examine the robustness of the eye gaze directional signal against stimulated shading and distancing. We found that both humans and chimpanzees discriminated eye gaze directions of humans better than those of chimps, particularly in visually challenging conditions. Also, participants of both species discriminated eye gaze directions of chimps better when the contrast polarity of the chimpanzee eye was reversed compared to when it was normal, namely when chimpanzee eyes were human-like with white sclera and darker irises. Uniform whiteness in the sclera thus facilitates the visibility of eye gaze direction even across species. Our findings thus support but also critically update the central premises of the gaze signaling hypothesis. So what did they do? They sat a bunch of chimps and humans down and showed them different eyes and tested whether or not they were better at gaze following when the sclera were white versus not. So this really adds a nice bit to the literature to the support of this sort of gaze signaling hypothesis, the eye cooperation and coordination hypothesis, this idea that it's easier to cooperate with your group mates if you can figure out where it is that they're actually looking. And the last paper I want to touch on before we kind of conclude here is this one, the adaptive significance of human scleral brightness in experimental study. So what these guys did is they tested current humans to figure out whether or not they trusted and wanted to cooperate with hominins of bright or dark sclera more. So they say here, in sum, it is unclear why scleral did depigmentation became the norm in humans, while not so in sister species like chimps, or why some extant species display intermediate degrees of pigmentation, as our ancestors presumably did at some point. We created realistic facial images of 20 individually distinct hominins with diverse facial morphology, each face in the human-like bright sclera and the generalized ape-like dark sclera version. Participants in two online studies rated the bright sclera hominins as younger, healthier, more attractive, and trustworthy, but less aggressive than the dark sclera humans. Our results support the idea that the appearance of more depigmented sclerae promoted perceived traits that fostered trust, increasing fitness for those individuals, and resulting in the depigmentation as a fixed trait in extant humans. So the point of this is pretty clear. We've got this nice hypothetical. Humans today have white sclera, and other hominids have a variety of different scleral colors from white to brown, right? They've got this nice variety. That's what the first paper showed us. One in six chimpanzees has white sclera. It exists in the natural variation of the population. In our other two studies, we saw two things. One, that having white sclera makes it easier to gaze, follow, and cooperate, and two, that extant humans consider white sclera to indicate trustworthiness, and it makes them want to cooperate with an individual more, as well as considering them a healthier individual. So this all sets up a very nice chain of events. If the natural variation exists in a hominin population, all it takes is a little bit of pressure for cooperation, and white sclera will become the dominant morph as far as scleral coloring. And creationists don't even know the basics of this literature. They can't even get step one right, that natural variation in the sclera of other hominids exists. They can't even do a basic Google images search. In this Answers in Genesis article from 2018, they have a section titled The Whites of Their Eyes in their article, Did Humans Really Evolve from Ape-Like Creatures? They see artistic renderings of fleshed out fossils of presumed ancestors of man often show the face of a very ape-like creature with very human-like eyes. So considering the face of something like Australopithecus to be ape-like, like from a skeletal perspective is kind of silly. Yes, it has a small brain case. Yes, it's more pragmatic 
than humans, but there are many aspects of the Australopithecus condition that are incredibly derived. For instance, they're less prognathic. Their teeth are overall more human-like, both in the dental arcade and in the size of the canines, as well as the loss of the canine P3 honing complex. But they go on to say, this is accomplished by nearly putting white sclera in the eyes, the whites of the eyes. All apes and monkeys, all of them, all apes and monkeys have a brown sclera that is nearly as dark as their brown iris, while all humans with normal, healthy eyes have essentially white sclera. Obviously, the fossil record for scleral color is non-existent, so this simply, this is a simply, so this is simply artistic license used to influence the viewer. And that's from 2018. Here's in 2021. In their Thinking Critically Ape Man messages they have on part five, check for propaganda. They see notably not all human-like features depicted in hominids, they mean hominins, are evident from the actual fossils. For example, artistic reconstructions of the ape-like fossils often portray the apes with soulful human eyes showing whites around the irises, unlike eyes of living apes. But researchers can't gaze into a fossil's eyeball sockets and divine the creature's eye coloring. So such human eyes, or should I say human eyes? Okay, I like that. Depictions of ape fossils are not fact, but propaganda. A form of communication that primarily persuades using means besides logic and truth. Awfully bold of them to accuse conventional science here of intentional deceit when they themselves can't even be bothered to do a cursory Google search about the variation of scleral coloring in hominids, let alone the fact that they won't touch the primary literature on the subject. I think this is a really stellar example of young earth creationism in a few ways. One, they don't have very many experts who are even tangentially trained in primatology or biological anthropology or comparative morphology, anything along those lines, because like it, it's pretty well known, I think, in the primatology community at least, and certainly in bioanth, that there are other hominids that can have white sclera. One, that's an issue. But two, I think this shows their reluctance to move on even the most basic issues, even when they can be shown to be categorically and demonstrably incorrect by photographs, not just one, but dozens and dozens and dozens in addition to studies that have spanned across the past decade and a half. I would really like to see them just own this one, like just come out and be like, okay, so maybe other hominids do in fact display white scar as a part of their natural variation. We didn't know this. This literature was at least a little bit more, um, fringe back in the day when we were initially making these claims. Yeah, we were maybe being a little bit lazy, but we're owning up to it now. We still don't accept evolution for reasons A, B, C, X, Y, Z. But they're not going to do that. Instead, they're going to ignore any criticism on the subject and just continue to trudge onward, completely mired in falsehoods and untruths that are easy to correct. Anyways, I just, this was really grinding my gears today, you guys, so I just thought I'd drum up a quick video kind of displaying my thoughts on the subject and how frustrating it can be sometimes to be a peruser of Young Earth Creations literature as someone who is, I would consider myself in academia right now, considering I'm, I'm getting my PhD. I think I'm in academia. Anyways, in the meantime, my gentle and of course very modern apes, Please do take care of yourselves, and I hope you enjoyed this brief look into chaos. I guess that's what you would call this. That's kind of what I would call it. Oh, and don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe, and join my Patreon if you feel so inclined. People have been joining now that I've been asking, and now I'm going to ask more and more. So, take care.